I then started talking about this to American producers and they started biting. So I went and sat in a pub near where we did Jurassic World. Two full grown men in chicken suits walked into the bar. This sounds brilliant. What if they go to the wrong pub? That's the first two pages of the script for the show. I've not directed live action before. We need to solve that. One location, it's nice and easy. Or it seemed like it was going to be nice and easy. Oh, it's does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I built it in Unreal Engine. I'm probably going to shot list in here with the DOP and the first AD. This shot, that shot, that shot. This was the first time we had four actors on stage at once. That's our little icon system. Can you just tell us ways people could support this project? It is a lot of money. That's paying everybody properly and not cutting any corners. I've got this far just with hard work and I believe in myself and I believe we will get a feature out of it. I need a leg up now. This is the concept from top to bottom, past, home, style, and if you want this, we can deliver it. Hey, hey, hey. All right. MX Bell, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the VFX process again. I know you as Martin, but now there's an X there. What's what's that about? <laughs> Moving away from, from VFX and into writing and directing. As British watchers and listeners might know, there is already a couple of famous Martin Bells. As I understand it, you've got to have a unique name. And so I need, I was on the kind of lookout for like a pen name or a way to modify my name. So it's just a little bit more unique. And then I went to work on Deadpool and Wolverine. And there's a Mitch Bell, one of the Marvel exec producers. For every production, like Marvel have a different like email address system. He's obviously got an email address and it's M Bell, which is what mine would be. <laughs> and so they would normally give you middle initial, but I got a middle initial. So they gave me X. That's um, cool. And it's, a, it's an X-Men movie, so I was like, well, I think I'll keep that. That's perfect. Is that going to stick then now, that MX Bell? That sounds pretty cool. Well, it's all stuff now. I've got started crediting myself as <laughs> <to> this. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> yeah. yeah, Martin, you have been on before, and you are back to talk about something super exciting, which is a written short film turned into a potential feature film. But can you just tell us where you've been in the last several years. Yeah, sure. So I, I graduated Teesside University with the degree in visualization in 2006. I went to work in visual simulation, so I'd already done a bit of real time straight off the bat, but I wanted to get into animation. I'd not done animation at university, uh, so I, I went to work at Kingston University in order to earn enough money to pay for our animation mentor. Graduated that in 2011 became a professional animator and worked in commercials and stuff around London. And in 2016, I joined Proofs Inc. London, and where I met you, working on Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, which is the poster just over here. Kind of a life-changing year working on Jurassic World. You were there. It was such, such great fun. I think anybody in cinema or in this industry is a massive fan of Jurassic, but you definitely was a huge, huge fan, yeah. Jurassic Park is what got me into this. And then, yeah, I carried on doing previs, and in 2020, I picked up Unreal Engine and made a film, but the film's called Present Book Rich. It was all made entirely by me in Unreal Engine, no budget. They won a bunch of awards, which was great. And I realized I wanted to start doing Unreal Engine more as professionally. I got a job as VFX art director on Deadpool and Wolverine. I'm using Unreal Engine to visualize sets for the art department and for the director. And then when that finished, I joined uh, Dimension and DNIG 360 as a visualization supervisor. And through all that, I've been writing my own projects and moving towards eventually directing them. And it's kind of what's brought us here. I've got two feature films in development and this short film that we're about to discuss is kind of like proof concept for one of them. Giblets, what is it, Martin? Where did it start? What's <laughs> going on? I mean, super intrigued. It started and again, I was on Deadpool and Wolverine at the time and I went to a BAFTA Guru day. So. I'm a member. I ended up with a big, a long lunch break. And I'd entertain myself by going to comic shops and stuff during the lunch break. But eventually, I'm off for a pint because I've got no, there's nothing else to do. You know? <laughs> yeah. So I went and sat in a pub. You know it. It was right near where we did Jurassic World. It was empty. And so I walked up and ordered a pint. The barman was Australian. The bloke who sat at the bar finished his pint and ordered another one. He said, sorry, mate, I'm going to have to go change the barrel. So he went off. And then no sooner had he left, two full-grown men in chicken suits, perfect chicken suits, walked into the bar. And they're both Australian. The bloke at the bar said, oh, what are you guys doing? And the guy made we're doing a chicken run. What's the chicken run, he asked. There's 40 of us. We land in a city. We've got two chicken suits. Everyone puts their names in a hat and 25 quid in the key. You draw two names out of the hat. Those two wear the chicken suits. They take the key, go into town, find a pub, 
stay there. Everybody else gives them a half hour head start and then starts running around the city trying to find them. And if you find them, you can drink out of the kitty as well. This says... Uh, it's clever, right? It's good. It's good. Brilliant. And my brain, like sort of film story brain, just went immediately to say, what if they go to the wrong pub? We've all been in dodgy boozers, right? We're just like, well, if you went to the wrong pub carrying a grant, like, <laughs> you're asking for trouble. In chicken suits. <laughs> yeah, in chicken suits. You're asking for trouble. By the time that the Australian barman walked back up, and these two guys had spent forever explaining this story, the Australian barman just walked back up and looks at him and went, you guys know the chicken right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'd start perfect. There you go. So that's the first. That's the first two pages of the script for the short. But that's where it came from. And then, but I didn't have a title, and obviously I couldn't call, can't call it the Chicken Run. I think there's a movie that exists. There, there is. There's already a couple of. <laughs> there's already a couple of those. And so it, it took me a few weeks, and I'm like, what am I going to call this? It's, it's too good an idea to not do. It's definitely at least a short. Probably get a feature out of it. But I need a title. It's going to live or die by the title. I can't find it. And then one day, I just, I, again hit me like a ton of bricks. Giblets. Oh. There you go. Because I've never written comedy before. Mm. And if it's called Giblets, it's definitely a comedy, you know? So I thought I'll have to go find a comedian who can be kind of a collaborator and he'd be the lead. I Googled like Australian comics work in the London scene and I found Thomas Green. And I went to one of his shows and just waited outside until until he walked out. And I said, excuse me, mate, I'm a writer director and I've got a film idea for you. And oh yeah, yeah. Do you want to go for a pint? And I went, here we go. This is it. Uh, and so he went over, he rode out a pint and then he was in. Oh, my name's Thomas Green. I'm a stand-up comedian and actor. And I am one of the leads on Giblets. How quick is this happening? Because I imagine that you're sitting in the pub, you're experiencing that, your brain is already thinking, I'm going to do this as a short. The idea was in April last year. But I didn't have a finished draft that I was happy with to send out until the new year. Because we've got another feature film in development. And because I come from animation, the... Our thing was we should make a short that I can direct because I've not directed live action before. We need to solve that. And Giblet seemed like the one because you just set in a pub. So it's one location. It's nice and easy. Or it seemed like it was going to be nice and easy. Oh, it still does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but from then it happened pretty quickly, right? And what happened was we went to Karen for the other film, for Dead Man's Hill, to try and, to try and get sales agents interested, try and raise his financing and stuff like that. I then started talking about this film, Giblet's to American producers and they started biting. The idea was always to make, to do a feature and to have the two things kind of side by side. So film the short, edit it. And while we're doing that, edit a trailer for a feature version and see if we can get some interest in a feature. And what happened to Kevin was everything just went, everything just got blown to pieces because people were actually suddenly really interested in it. And I'm like, oh fuck, I need to write the script then. So while I were in Canada, I ordered two chicken suits. As you do. As you do. By this point, I already cast Joel as well as the other lead. Hi, my name is Joel Stern. I'm one of the leads in Martin's film, Giblet. I sent a message saying, we need, I need to be at the pub on Thursday. We're going to do a photo shoot in the chicken suits because I need a pitch deck. When I went to meet Tom, I'd already made a, an image in Unreal Engine, which I'll show you. This is a great example, like your broader like skill set. It gives you a massive advantage for pitching then, if you can chuck together a pitch deck, some set designs. Yeah. 100%. This is the first image I made. So that's in Unreal Engine. It's a couple of metahumans that had a friend make me chicken suits. Brilliant. It was kind of working. It kind of did the job. Like visually, I showed it to Thomas and he got what I was trying to do. Well, I've got two actors now. I first get two chicken suits. I've got a pub. I'll just go, we'll go do it for real. So then the real version of that looks like this, which is much better. And so I quickly threw a pitch deck together that first week back after Karen. So uh, obviously striking cover image. The idea was with this, this version of the pitch deck is that it's kind of fulfilling both jobs. It's for the short and for the feature. And the feature would be set in the States. My next page on the pitch deck is usually uh, the log line. And a log line has a very specific format. Reunited for a bachelor party drinking game, an uptight successful graduate. So we're getting into the characters a little bit, which is Joel's character and his chaotic former friend run afoul of a violent rogue mob enforcer, forcing them to stop the bickering and overcome the differences of oh, wearing full chicken suits. So the logline page is usually second. People shouldn't need to know any further. The next pages are like, if they want more information, they probably know if there's something they're interested in from the title page and the logline page. Show your best stuff first. You've got to hook them. If they're not interested, they've got a pile of these to look through. Exactly. So. For this one, when it's talking about comms, I like to use original poster images for the films. I also like to put in budgets, so what it cost and what it made. Thematic comps means so we're not saying that this film is for this budget. It's a comp for the tone, the style, the sense of humour, things like that. So Cocaine Bear, I thought was a good one because it's brand new and it lives or dies by its title, which Giblets does. Uh, the others are kind of a little bit more tonally 
It's a genre movie. It's got horror elements. We've sort of described it as Hot Fuzz meets The Hangover. I can feel that for sure. Yeah. You know what that film is, don't you? Like, it's a film about drinking with the violence of Hot Fuzz. Like, some of my writing influences, especially on this, very much Martin McDonough, so in Bruges, is in there. And there's also some very Coen Brothers kind of sensibilities about it as well, like misunderstandings and coincidental but funny, um, which is, is comes from Fargo, I think. In this deck, I've then got About Me and the director's statement. I've put this up, up, up front, so the story as to where X comes from, and the story about the, the, the pub and the chicken suits. That's all on this page, and it kind of, kind of gives you an idea of what's going to be going on. For anybody that's looking to invest or producer to take this to the next level, you know, in terms of investment or getting it off the ground, green light, it's always nice to have a bit of information about the person that's doing it, it rather than, as well as a project, it's people attached to it. Yeah, it's, it's definitely worth, worth doing. Then we've got the synopsis. Uh, so it's two synopses because there's one for the short and one for the feature. They're both directed with the same story. The logline does cover them both, but obviously the, the feature is a little bit more developed. I've told the story about what happened in real life, and then this is the story I've made up that is derived from it. So once you got past that, then I would tend to write a bit about the characters. You can be wordy because if they got this point, they want to read something, so you can give them stuff to read. So because we've already cast these guys, we were able to, to do it this way. These are prospective castings, right? The type of acts that I would like to have as opposed to who we've got. So then I, I made this, which is now out of date, but at the time this was what we were going to do. The idea being it's a parallel production. We're, we're going to be working on the first, on the on the script, and we're going to be prepping the short and doing the crowdfunding for the short at the same time. So I was being a bit ambitious. Once I started writing the, the feature script, it just took all my time. The important thing to say is that we got, we got American producers interested in it as a concept, but the first thing we said was we're doing a short. And so their response was always, well, when you've made the short, we'd be interested to see the feature script. Of course, that sounds, that sounds logical. And the short as well, obviously. Yeah. Like, we're kind of at this at this stage where there's, there's definitely an avenue to pursue, but we do need to have, one, a feature film script, and two, a short film version made. We've now got the feature film script, and we still need to make short. So that's the focus now is let's get this short up and running, green lit, shooting, all that stuff. Yeah, and I prioritise that because I wanted to be sure that the product that we're going to be selling effectively, which is the feature version, it was as good as it could be. What I didn't want to do is make a shot and then have to almost reverse engineer a feature out of it. You're not rushing through it just to tick a box and get it done to move on to that. You're very focused on this is the groundwork, lay the foundations for that bigger project when it comes, but you've got that in mind, let's focus yeah. on this first. Exactly, yeah. It felt like the right thing to do. No, that makes sense. Then the final page, uh, I tend to put the stuff up about the producers. So Ren's my producer on both projects, Andy Noel is a friend of mine who has worked in, in film, but also is a um, established musician and he's on the very big on the London Irish scene. And I then I tend to have at the end, I think this is 10 pages, which is a nice number. And that's from the feature. And he puts the, uh, an image back into the head of like, we've got through that. Oh yeah, here we go. And it's a nice visual. This is the end of the feature, like they're, they're escaping. Like I mentioned earlier, you've got a very broad skill set. You told me you've you built that pub in Unreal Engine to kind of scout angles, cameras. What's the benefit of being able to do such things early on to show potential investors or producers? I was very cautious that it's so small, it's going to be difficult to get a camera crew in. <laughs> so we, have to, we are going to have to be careful about that. Also, I was concerned that the way the action is going to work in my mind isn't really possible with the layout of that pub. I built it in Unreal Engine using a few assets from the thing. So the pub that I went to, there was a door in the middle behind the bar, and that's kind of like important for the action. There's kind of things that happening in and around that. And in this bar, which is otherwise kind of perfect, the three doors, which are the gents, the ladies, and the back room are over here. So anytime a character needs to leave, they're not leaving by the back of the bar, they're leaving that way. And it's quite important at one point because there's a shotgun behind the bar and we need someone who comes in through this door. So the idea was to try and figure out not just what kind of shots we could get, and it's not a perfect representation. Like I said, we would scan it normally. I took my distometer and I kind of did a quick measurement. Oh, okay. It's accurate enough to just test the flow. After I did that, 
I mentioned at work that we were going to do this, and uh, I've still got some uh, clips here hanging. Um, that's Joel, and this is my friend Mike, who is before well, we got Thomas. Mike was just standing in, but you can kind of see what's happening here. So we shot all the action. Oh, so this is using VP, but almost like a previs. It's basically doing live that live previs, but, but I kind of build it as virtual scouting. Yeah, scouting, yeah. It was just a tech check that we knew what what was going on. So that all happened in, in here, and so what? What I did was um, MetaHumans for everybody. And you've set up the MetaHumans and stuff with your experience with them. Yeah, I set the MetaHumans up, yeah. And then uh, what we did was, if I, this works, hopefully it does. I know it's like visual, like scouting, but that's like high-end previews in, in a sense, isn't it? Visualising. Yeah. We recorded it all. Obviously, I need to remove some of these tables and stuff. We don't have those live. This is Frank. He's one of the villains of the piece. And then we've got the two lads that are about to walk in now. I didn't have chicken suits, but I did have, but we got these two. Just met him as a little bit chickeny. Yeah, so we've got basically we've got the entire film done like this. And so the idea is going to be when we get a little bit closer to shooting, that I'm probably going to shot list in here with the DOP and the first AD and be like, right, this shot, that shot, that shot. So on the day was super efficient, right? Because it's a pub. It's going to open at a certain time. we are done and out. So it's just really important that we've sort of planned that out. That's so great to, to have that tool and kind of things in place before you get to shoot. Also play with lighting within Untied Unreal yeah. Engine on set. Really visualise things for the cinematographer's benefit as well. And to be able to work on it together before you're even on set. Yeah. That's incredible. It was good fun. It was a really good day. And uh, I said, that was how I met Joel. He knew Mike and he brought Joel. I didn't realize Joel was like such a great actor. He'd read the scripts and he just started playing Dave exactly as I was like, oh, mate, it's you. And when you're planning this out with that dimension, you've got your measurements and your distances from with, from the door to the bar. They can walk around and it's, it's really accurate to where they are in the Unreal Engine space. Is that just because of the power of like the Vicon system? What's the kind of technical setup there? Can you do that with lower budget versions of that? This was the first time we had four actors on stage at once, all being recorded at the same time, and the camera. That's our the Vicon system. And obviously in a quite a big space as well, the pub interior more than fit in the capture volume. You can't really replicate that with standard motion capture suits. Because we could also stick the trackers on the on any object. So we track the table, like I say, we track anything. There's a shotgun to the later, we track that. So it, it's super useful. But obviously it's not something that everybody's got access to. I just happened to have access to it at the time. And I said, guys, do you mind if I come and spend a day? And I'd not really spend much time on there, so I wanted to get used to it as well. Gotcha. For my job, we call this production visualization, where we record the camera and everything all at once. And that's part of my job. And, and I'd not really had much access to the, the tech at the time. So it was important to kind of, you know, learn how to use it and learn how to direct on it. Well, that's only adding to your tool kit at the end of the day, isn't it? You're, that's advancing your knowledge of that type of filmmaking, that additional stage that maybe the technology these days allows us to do that. As much as you can get into it at the start, and plan and it's all part of a pitch i imagine when you come from previous right i mean i just can't Im i can't imagine going onto a set and not having exactly if not previous everything at least having a very thorough shot list and know exactly what it is that i want to get if i'd not had access to this system and recorded all this in one day i would have probably used move one have you used move, move yeah, one yeah yeah we've used move one which is uh like move ai's ai version yeah, so I still need to use Move 1 because one of the ideas I've had on since since we did this, so the guys walk in here, right? They should stop. I need them to stop. And for whatever reason, I didn't get them to do it on the day. So I haven't got that captured. So I'm going to capture myself on Move 1 gotcha. during the walk in so that I can do the tilt up in here and plan that shot. So I still need to do extra bits and pieces to this. But if I didn't have access to the system at all, I would be using Move 1 and just doing the whole thing myself. Exactly the same way I did Prison Break Ridge just so that I've got the action recorded in the space that I'm going to have to shoot and just check what shots I can get. The other problem is all these, you see how, the ref, how all these pictures reflect that light? I didn't think about it when I looked at it in Unreal, but you walk in with a camera. <laughs> you've got some you got some post work to get rid of. Big fucking problem. So we already know that like we have to try and shoot as much as we can this way. So that shot that we were just looking at, for example, like that's going to be a problem. So uh, I spoke to my friend who's a production designer. We're going to figure out ways to kind of tone down the reflectivity on the on the stuff, but it might be that we have to try and figure out like where else can we put this camera? That's a little bit better. Do you know what I mean? So you can kind of figure some of that stuff out and they're doing it live. Could you redress the pub? Is Would that be allowed? Or if you were to do it on a build, you could control it more. I guess there's loads of factors. 
so the feature, the idea for the feature is that, that we would do a set build. And we need to control everything. And we also need to be able to take a wall out to put a of camera in, get a shot, things like that. But that's not achievable for a shot. It has to be a pub. So there are things that we can do. We can't really redress the pub. We have to be able to leave it kind of as it as we found it after three days. Can you just tell us and summarize ways that people could support this project via crowdfunding or maybe any other ways? Just in terms of what people can pledge and what, what we're offering in return. 25 quid to get the ticket. We're offering things like credit is 150 quid, 250 quid for an invitation to the premiere. You should get a one-on-one. -on -one. So if you want to talk to me for half an hour about filmmaking or visualization or whatever you can or a pint on set is obviously one of my ideas oh perfect it's fun and then obviously the associate producer and executive producer credit options and one of two set one chicken suits if you wanted one we're going to do some crowdfunding content have you seen hot ones oh yes so yeah we're going to do one with them both in chicken suits we are going to be sharing some funny skits behind the scenes stuff on instagram uh, and on Facebook. And so you can get involved in that. We're going to have some funny stuff coming up. So, I mean, if you've got the ability to to help us out and you want to grab a perk, please do. Um, so it's about 32,000 we're asking for. I think the thing to know is that that's paying everybody properly and not cutting any corners. It is a lot of money, we, so we do need help. Any way of funding a project ain't easy. You've got to try everything. Like I'm doing things that are completely outside of the stuff that I ever thought was possible. I can see the next level. It's right there. And the level's above it too. I need a leg up now. Like I've not asked for anything before. You're the same, like working class northerners, right? Do you ever notice when we were in, in London doing those movies, like how few of us there are? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. When, when, you, when you hear one, it's like, hey, you from- Before I started working in film, I'd not had quinoa or avocado or things like that. Like just weren't part of my, you know, when my dad were a striking miner, I ate beans on toast. And I think it is important to get voices from those backgrounds. And so it's kind of like, I, I've got this far just with hard work. Like you say, you can see that next level. Yeah. And you just need to get onto that platform. If we get this money to make this film, I'll make the film. And I believe in myself and I believe we will get a feature out of it. We just need to do this bit first. There's so many parts to the bigger picture. It's, it's crazy, right? The short is really important because this is the concept from top to bottom. Cast, tone, style, me, everything. This is it. And if you want this, we can deliver it. If you're not able financially, I don't want anyone, anyone who can't afford it, giving us money. If you can't afford it, but you want to kind of help another way, 100% follow us, Giblets Movie on Instagram, Giblets Movie on Facebook. The website for crowdfunding and the website to share is gibletsthemovie.com and .co.uk. And yeah, help help us out by, you can help us out by sharing and, and trying to help us get some of these video clips into people's feeds and attract more eyeballs to the project. You know, I think every filmmaker that is either at this stage, wants to get to this stage, or have experienced this process before, everybody can relate to the grind that it takes to get this off the ground. I mean, this is a project that you are passionate about. You've written yourself. You want to be attached to the bigger thing. You're not just writing something to sell it. It's quite obvious that there's a lot of love that's going into this this project it feels really exciting and uh, it's going to be the script is really funny i don't i don't i'll tell you who else thinks it's funny these lot <laughs> <laughs> these lot think it's funny it's going to be good fun if you like deadpool and wolverine kind of shares that kind of dna it's got some blood in it it's got a lot of swearing in it you know it's what you're going to do you know it's yeah. got an australian in it perfect <laughs> that's a good cocktail so just to touch on like advice for filmmakers there, Martin, is there any do's and don'ts when writing and pitching a project that you've learnt? I would definitely do if you're writing and you want something to sell. Two thirds of the giblets, the, the feature is set inside a bar. That's achievable, right? The stuff that's outside is just set in the street and in a couple of other different bars that would be locations. But that's an achievable thing. Don't go writing something that's kind of like Avatar or something like that, right? It's not going to get made. You're just wasting your time. Like, no one's making them. Yeah, think of high concept ideas and just and deliver them well. Aim for 90 pages. Don't be, get, don't be getting greedy. Go to 100 if you need to, but don't be going over 100. And just be economical in both ideas and try and think about what's going to happen to the budget. You have to try and think with the budget in mind. Like, a set build is fine. But if it's going to involve a massive virtual set extension with VFX, you know, that's not really achievable anymore. 
and it's going to it's going to negatively impact the ability for your script to sell. My goal at the minute, I'm not looking to sell my scripts, I'm looking to make them. My producer was complaining that I put songs in the thing. She's like, how much are they going to cost? And I'm like, oh, oh my, does it like, uh, I'll, I'll, we'll figure that out, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to it. But I, and so sometimes I break my own, <laughs> yeah. break my own uh, rule. Like I say, it goes to, to, back to passion. When you've got something in your mind that would be that song, is a no brainer it would be perfect for this scene yeah and no, that's it, it's yeah. like you can't help but build that scene up in your head i mean deadpool and wolverine which we'll be talking about there's a song in that that is stuck in people's heads yeah i can't remember if that was in the script i can't remember if they said the bye 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 was in the script it was definitely in all the early phases that i saw but we'll talk about that yeah we will come back and we're going to do part two because that's a full conversation in itself isn't it is there anything any final notes that you want to mention shout outs uh, anything at all before we jump off no just to say uh if you're able to help us out please do amazing well martin honestly thanks so much and Honestly, if there's anyone that's going to do it, it's going to be you, Martin, from all the years of knowing you. Uh, and I wish you all the best with it. And if anybody can help out, Martin, uh, yeah, pl please do, because it's uh, it's going to be a fun one. Thanks, mate. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I will. Let's just give mine a round of applause, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank, you, man. Okay. thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your time, man. And um, we'll speak to you soon. Thanks, guys. See you in a bit. Bye. Bye, buddy.